Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight, uh, we are having the second session for the bar review for students from the University of Visayas and other Cebuano barristers. And we are going to take up the exercise of police power of the state in relation to rights of labor, prerogatives of management, and other related issues concerning the seven books of the Labor Code. Okay, good, good evening, mayang gabi kanatong tanan. This is the second session of our series of bar review webinars, which we call uh, Bisayanian Operation Excellence. Bisayanian Bar Operation Excellence. And uh, we thank Dean uh, Turigusa and Associate De Dean Wagas and all of you uh, who considers this important as part of the preparations for the 2021 bar examinations. Last meeting, I have outlined the entire curriculum which uh, encompasses 36 Mondays, 36 Mondays, which started on June 1 to 2020 and will end on the second Monday of February 2021. So I request everybody to, to mute themselves except when we come into the question and answer portion. I hope that uh, you are encouraged to ask questions uh, because I am the only bar reviewer who entertain questions from the floor, from the students. Anything that you want to clarify, want to confirm, or you want to suggest. Uh, by the way, uh, I have just signed uh, 10,000 copies of my latest Ultimate Labor Law Review Compendium, uh, which is going to be uh, distributed by Central Books. And you know where Central Books near uh, the University of San Carlos along P. Del Rosario Street, and uh, this is a very good book, complete from hiring to retiring, and in fact, we will follow this. The outline of this book is also the outline of our bar review by webinar, and uh, perhaps uh, Dean Wagas told you that yesterday in the issue of Freeman, uh, in my column, I have a daily column. I hope you will follow it uh, because I will be discussing many principles of law. And last uh, yesterday, I mentioned that we are undertaking this seminar for you. Uh, in the bar examination of 2019, which was released earlier this year, before the or it, uh, at the earlier stage of the lockdown. Only 27.36% pass. So out of every 100, only 27 would pass. For every 10, for every 10 in the classroom, only two or three will pass. Can you imagine that very, very high mortality rate? No, very high mortality rate. Out of 7,685 only 2,103 made it. So many are called, but only few are chosen. And uh, again, the top-notchers are from Legaspi, 
no? And uh, some other places like Palawan, Baguio, St. Louis University. So these are uh, good signs, no? Most of the top 10 come from provincial schools, no? And uh, most of them are uh, outside Metro Manila. In 2018, 22 percent passed. So that is lower than last year, no? And uh, out of the 22 percent, uh, 4 four thousands were first timers, no? Parang hati hati for kalahati first timer, kalahati repeaters. But look at that. Uh, this is something you can al analyze, uh, Dean Wagas, that out of the 4,079 repeaters, only 11% made it. Can you imagine? Only 460 out of 4,000 made it of the repeaters, huh? Medyo may, nahirapan ang mga repeaters kasi ang mga new, ang mga first timers ang mas mataas ang, ang percentage of passing. That was in, meron tayong San Carlos, ha? Apat ang top notcher nila sa 2018. Ang isa niyan ay kababayan ko from Ronda Cebu, si uh, Mark Lee Augustus uh, D. Natuel. No? Yan, uh, yung number two dyan is from our town, no? And we are writing a book together, no? As a co-author, as co-author. So, ito mga inspirasyon lang para sa inyo. Yung mga sikat na mga top-notcher, Ferdinand Marcos, Florence Regalado, yan. Yan ang mga sikat na mga top-notcher. Manuel Rujas, President, first place. Diosdado Makapagal, President, first place. Ferdinand Marcos, President, first place. Sergio Osmeña, Senior, second place. Jose Laurel, second place. Elpidio Quirino, second place. Manuel Quezon, fourth place. Si Manuel Quezon at si Sergio Osmeña, mag-classmate yan sa UST. And... Uh, Medyo mas, mas matalino si Sergio Osmeña. Ito ang lolo ni uh, dating Mayor uh, uh, Osmeña at ni dating Senador. Uh, pero Vice President siya. So Rodrigo, Rodrigo Duterte, hindi siya bartap na chair. But he is a lawyer. No? Di, ang mga hindi lawyer, si GMA, si ERAP, si IPBR, si Cory Aquino, Ramon Magsaysay. All the rest are lawyers, no? So, sina, bini, nilalagay ko lang dito, ha? Jokno, are you aware that Senator Jokno uh, was, uh, was allowed to take the bar without taking up law? He did not study law. He was a board top notcher of CPA, number one, but he was not allowed to take his oath because he was only 17 years old when he topped the CPA. So he, he, he just read the book of his father, the late Senator Ramon Jokno, and he tapped the bar. Tay sila dalawa ni Hubito Salunga, exactly the same. Pero si Hubito Salunga studied in UP. Ito si Senator Jokno never enrolled in the College of Law. But today, that is no longer allowed. That is no longer allowed. You should take the four-year course after the four-year pre pre preparatory uh, baccalaureate degree. No? Ferdinand Marcos was arrested and convicted of the murder of Julio Nalondasan. He was sentenced to 10 years in jail, but while he was in prison, he reviewed for the bar, he prepared his appeal brief, and he took the bar and his unofficial grade was allegedly 98.5 but it was reduced to 92.35 because there were allegations that he uh, he cheated but when he was given an oral exam 
uh, by the Supreme Court in Bank. He was uh, he was required to appear before the Supreme Court in Bank, but he could re he could memorize the rules of court verbatim. That is called photographic memory. But today, the, the, the law students do not have photographic memory. They have pornographic memory. No. Hilario Davide Jr., the father of Vice Governor Junjun Davide, was a barefoot boy from Kulawin, Argao. He had to walk 10 kilometers to the population to study. And he was uh, a famous member of the both the 1973 Constitution, Constitutional Convention and the 1987 Commission. He ended as Chief Justice of the Supreme Court. Artemio Panganiban, also Chief Justice, he could not afford the daily fare from Sampaloc to UP in uh, Diliman. So he studied in FEU and he was number six in the bar. Uh, a guy who flunked the bar in 1993 became number one in 1994. So if, if you flunk, do not lose your hope. You still have the opportunity to tap the bar. Claro M. Recto was given the highest grade in Ateneo and in New Estate, and yet he flunked in the bar because of his handwriting and also because uh, he got below 50 in civil procedure. And after failing in the bar, he wrote a book on civil procedure, and next time he passed the bar. He was not a bar top nudger, but he became a famous statesman and public official, Laro Embrecto. Janet Abuel was a single parent from Baguio, working student. He topped the bar in 1998. So, Lawrence Regulado has the highest grade until now, not, not uh, surpassed. The first female bar top notcher was Tecla San Andres Siga from Albay and uh, Tabaco Albay and he is the mother, she, she was the mother of a senator, Senator uh, Victor Siga. He was my brat in the fraternity. Cecilia Munoz Palma was the second bar top notcher who became Associate Justice of the Supreme Court. This is just to inspire you. Husband and wife, both top notcher, became justices of the Supreme Court. Laila Dilima, who is now behind bar, was a bar top notcher. And uh, Indrile was number 11. He got 100% in commercial law. Frank Driglon, third place. Claudio Tihanki. Bartap Natcher, his son, Bartap Natcher, his nephew, Bartap Natcher. All number one, huh? all number one. And all, uh, ang father and son is from Ateneo and the nephew from UP. And may, maybe you will be interested to know that the father of Governor Gwyn Garcia, uh, Sinoy Pabling Garcia from our town in Dumanhog was uh, number three in the bar exam. And the son, who is now the congressman representing the fourth district, no, the third district, is Pablo John, was a fourth placer. The uncle, which, who is the brother of Noy Pabling, was also a bar town manager, top ten. He's the owner of uh, Sun, uh, Sunstar, the family of Jesus Garcia. The brother Manuel Samura and Ronaldo Samura, now man, uh, Ronaldo uh, Congressman of San Juan, uh, were both Bartak Natcher. 
So tonight, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we will now cover the, what was stated in our syllabus. Uh, and we will start with uh, basic principles. No, basic principles. Uh, if there is one thing that I ask you to memorize, it is Article 13, Section 3 of the Constitution. Because this provision of the 1987 Constitution uh, is the basis, the constitutional basis of all the uh, legal statutes that has something to do with rights of labor. For instance, the mandate to afford full protection to labor, local or overseas. Even if you are not within the territorial domain of the Philippines, if you work abroad, still the labor laws of the Philippines will protect you, provided that your contract of employment was processed in accordance with POAA rules and regulations, and it is signed in the Philippines, pursuant to the principle of lex contractus, the law of the country where the contract was signed would apply even if the employer is located in Dubai, the agency is located in the Philippines, the employee was hired in the Philippines but deployed to the United Arab Emirates, the law of the Philippines will protect you. The chairman of next year's bar examination, Justice Mario Victor Leonen, a famous professor of law in the University of the Philippines in constitutional law and political law, was the ponente in the case of Samir International Placement Agency Inc. versus Joy Cabiles. And this is a very important case. This case, I think, will be asked in the bar examination. It is important that you will have to analyze this case, understand the principle, and tonight, later tonight, I will discuss tonight, later, the case of uh, Samir versus Kabiles, which is a reiteration of the Supreme Court in Bank. Remember, Joy Cabeles is a Supreme Court in Bank decision. Fourteen justices signed for the majority, only one dissented, and that was former Dole Secretary Arturo Brion, who was also number one in the bar examination of 1974 from Ateneo. He was appointed Secretary of Labor, later uh, uh, Associate Justice of the Supreme Court, and he dissented from this uh, decision in Samir. But the majority was very strong in insisting that the legislative branch, the House of Representatives and the Senate, cannot circumvent the very explicit, categorical, and unequivocal mandate of the Constitution to afford full protection to labor and also denying Joy Cabiles of the Equal Protection Law because when you are in the Philippines and you are subjected to illegal dismissal, the remedy would be reinstatement with full back wages from the time the wages were withheld illegally up to the actual time of reinstatement plus interest and also attorney's fees of 10%. Interest because of the case of Dario Nakar versus Gallery Frames, which was decided under the ponencia of then Justice 
Just Dado Peralta, who is now the incumbent Chief Justice of the Philippines. He is my neighbor here in the Beef Homes uh, Paranaque, Chief Justice the, uh, Peralta, and also the former Chief Justice Lucas Bersamin. They always go to the church in the same parish where I am serving as a lay minister, an extraordinary minister of the Holy Eucharist. And I give them the Holy Eucharist, the two justices who are both chief justices. And we were, the three of us were also professors in the University of Santo Tomas, faculty of civil law. And the uh, daughter of Chief Justice Bersamin was my student. She is now the presiding judge in the regional trial court in Las Piñas. So, in this principle of protection to labor, there is no distinction whether where you are in the Philippines. Therefore, it was unconstitutional for Congress to enact a law that would lower the back wages to only three months. That law, which was enacted twice under uh, the Labor Code, uh, and then later on under the Amendment of Republic Act 1842. The Supreme Court was very emphatic, was very firm in saying that the Congress of the Philippines uh, violated the Constitution by enacting a law that would discriminate against OFWs by limiting the back wages to only three months. So the Supreme Court declared as unconstitutional that uh, specific provision of uh, Republic Act 1842 in the case of Ar uh, Ar uh, Antonio Serrano versus Gallant Maritime. And, and then later on, in the case of Samer International versus Joy Cabiles, when the uh, lower house in, uh, introduced again by surreptitious insertion uh, in Republic Act 10022 after the Supreme Court declared it un unconstitutional in uh, uh, the provision of 1842. It was reintroduced, reintroduced surreptitiously without declaring it in public hearing that it was the intention to introduce a very damaging provision of the law. And the irony is that 8042 was entitled as the Magna Carta for Labor, and yet there is a provision that discriminates against the OFW. And then, the state shall guarantee the rights of workers. You know, guarantee. You just contemplate on the on the on the on on the word guarantee. In other words, sina sinabi ng fundamental law. Sagot ko kayo. Sagot kayo ng estado. It's not just the government that will protect you. It is the state, and the state is a community of persons, more or less numerous permanently occupying a territory and having a government with sovereignty to which the great body of inhabitants render habitual obedience. Can you imagine that? It, it is the four elements of the state, people, government, territory, and sovereignty. They are all mandated to afford and to guarantee not just to afford full protection to labor, but to guarantee the rights of all workers. Of all workers. Hindi sinabing employees lang, ha? The right to self-organization is not limited to employees. Don't ever believe that there must be employer-employee relationship before you can be entitled to the right to self-organization because even the self-employed people can form, can join, can assist, 
in the formation of a union for purposes of mutual aid and protection, not for purposes of collective bargaining. The companion of the right to self-organization and the peaceful concerted action including the right to strike in accordance with law. We are the only constitution in the whole world. Take note of that, ha? Bisayanyans. Kumbati kamo. We are the only country that has a constitution that enshrines the right to self, the right to strike. The right to strike. If you read the constitution of the USA, it's very brief does not contain any rights of labor. But the Philippines being a third world country where uh, more than 65 million are in the labor force, there's a need for the sovereign Filipino people to enshrine the rights of labor so that it is not just stated in the labor code which, where it can be amended, where it can be repealed depending upon the majority of the politicians. But the founding fathers of the 1987 Constitution uh, decided to enshrine this so that it needs a constitutional amendment to withdraw, to delete, to repeal any of the rights now included in Article 13, Section 3 including the right to peaceful concerted action, which includes the right to strike in accordance with law. So all these rights, I will discuss later in details, but you take note of the right to security of tenure, because this is the most, the most assaulted right, the most abused, the most violated right, the right of security of tenure. Sa pag-hire pa lang ng empleyado uh, to a regular position, regular position, gagawing kontraktual. And in the guise of the exercise of management prerogative. Even if the position entails the function that are usually necessary and desirable to the usual business or trade of the employer. So there is a circumvention of the law, and including also the prerogatives to hire, to fire, to transfer, to promote, to lay up, to discipline. The, many of the employers in the Philippines, I am sorry, sorry to say, have the, the tendency, especially now, under a COVID crisis, uh, to use the pandemic as a uh, just justification for uh, rush and uh, reckless termination of employment. Of course, under Article 297, which used to be Article 283, the employer ha is authorized with uh, retrenchment, redundancy, labor saving device, and even closure. But there should be some basis both in substance and in procedure because the right to terminate, the right to dismiss is founded on two due process, the substantive due process and the procedural due process, which you already know from the very beginning. So. I am sharing with you some uh, very important provisions and principles, like the principle of social justice. You know, all labor laws, all, all social legislation are enacted or were enacted in order to implement social justice. The word, the word social justice the phrase social justice has been repeated more than 10 times in the Constitution, even in the Declaration of Policy, in Article 2, the Declaration of Fundamental Principles and Policies, the 
the phrase social justice until Article 13. In fact, the legislative body is mandated by law to give priority to social justice legislation. What is the purpose? It is to make sure that the forces in society, as defined in Kalalang versus Williams, that the law should be humanized and the social forces in society should be more or less no? equalized. Equalization, humanization, so that justice in its most secular signification may at least be approximated pursuant to the time-honored principle of salus populi suprema est lex. So if you, if you think of the law of recruitment, why is the law of the recruitment very protected of the OFW? It is because of social justice. That is the rationality. That is the philosophy. That is the good sought to be attained. To a, and there are evils sought to be avoided because of the need for social justice. Social justice in wages, in benefits, social justice in disability benefits, disease and death, protecting workers, health, safety and welfare, especially in the light of a pandemic globally. There is a need for the state to flex its muscles. I'm just telling this to you, reminding you that the philosophy of labor law is social justice. Para bang mga tanang, ano man yung ibuhat, man yung balaura? It's not enough that you know what is the law. You should think deeper and say, what is the philosophy behind this law? What is the good sought to be attained and the evil sought to be avoided? That is how to study labor law. And if social justice is the purpose, that is the target, that is the destination, that is the goal, what is the vehicle used? That is police power. Police power is the vehicle used by the state to achieve the goal, which is social justice. Are you following me so far? As attorney. And then, I want you to master all the rights of labor and to balance it with the prerogatives of management and then the power of the state. The power of the state to enact laws that is in Kalalang versus Williams. Uh, police power is done through the enactment of laws whereby property rights can be impaired. Even personal liberties can be sacrificed for the sake of the common good. That is social justice. Justice for society. Justice for the many. So the rights of an individual can be uh, sacrificed by the state for the greater good of the greater number. So the power of the state is to balance, balance her. How does the state balance? By enactment of laws, by uh, issuance of regulations, by uh, adjudicatory function, and by uh, promoting unionism because it is important that the workers should be united so that they will have a bargaining liberty before the employer. And that is because the state values the workers, the state is mandated to afford full protection to labor. So, in the case that I have discussed in my book uh, of uh, labor law, could the, uh, the title of the book is The Ultimate Labor Law Review Compendium for Bar Excellence with Effective Bar Strategies and Techniques. Nako. Pag meron kang kopya nitong libro na ito, parang nasa ganghaan ka na sa langit. O dili, yung ka musulod, problema nga ni mo kay 
ikaw na inagunit sa yawi sa kaharian no kaning mga tao nga dili mukuha aning libroha galit sa sarili nila because this is the answer to your questions lahat ng gusto mo malaman nandito na sa libro so we will uh, take that up that case whereby the the state uh, acting through the secretary of labor uh, issued an order this was secretary of labor uh, franklin drillon issued a ban against the deployment of uh, female workers to Japan because there was a time when uh, sending women to Japan was the way by which the beautiful women from the province can attain certain degree of uh, certain degree of raising their status improving their uh, economic and uh, economic and social status in society and so it was found out that this uh, business of sending women to japan was abused by uh, uh, the recruiters um, and in fact it was a front for prostitution na magpadala tayo ng mga babae sa ibang bansa pagkatapos sasabihin doon na ipadala as a singer niya di man makamao mo kanta makamao na mugunit sa microphone pero di makamao mo kanta niya nga nung magpadala mo tag singer nga di kamao mo kanta mauna nga ka na di ay usara na kapag takuban isang pamaraan na para ma-justify ang pagpapadala ng mga babae doon sa Japan. So ang sabi ni Frank Drillon, isang matapang na Bisaya na taga Luilo, na classmate ni uh, late uh, Senator Miriam Dipensor Santiago, sabi niya, I am exercising the police power of the state. I am issuing uh, department order number one. Department Order Number no. One. Remember, Drillon was Secretary of Labor during the time of FBR, and uh, even towards the end of the term of President Aquino. And uh, that that ban, that ban, was attacked. The Association of Recruiters went to the Supreme Court to question the validity of that order, department order, that uh, Secretary Drillon, first of all, uh, violated, exceeded the bounds of his office because that is, in effect, uh, amending the Constitution. The Secretary of Labor cannot amend the Constitution. He is in the executive department. He is not in the legislative. He cannot, he cannot come up with a law that will uh, prohibit the sending of women to Japan. And so the Supreme Court, uh, with the late Justice Abraham Sarmiento, um, an icon of human rights and a delegate to the 1973 Constitutional Convention, uh, uh, the Supreme Court said that the order of the globe was a valid exercise of police power. And then uh, the other grounds used by the petitioner was that the order was an impairment of contracts that were already signed. That some o female OFWs already signed their uh, contracts and this order is an impairment of that contract and therefore null and void and must, ba must be declared so by the Supreme Court. But the Supreme Court uh, refused and upheld the exercise by Secretary Drillon 
of the the secretary Villon of that order. So uh, in the other the, the other reason also is uh, the order of secretary Villon was a violation of the equal protection clause. Why? Why prohibit only the women? Why not the men? Yung mga babae, bawal magpunta sa Japan, unya ka ng mga bayot, nga nang pato o mga dito. O, oh, dili ba na uh, violation sa equal protection? Mao na nga, niingon, niingon ang Supreme Court, no. It is based on a valid classification which is germane to the purpose of the law. Tama ha, pagka ang Supreme Court papabor sa iyo, may reason talaga eh. Meron pang isang ground. That violates our rights to travel. Oh, hindi na makami ang makapunta sa Japan. Kaya pinagbawalan mo kami dahil dyan sa order mo na yan. But the Supreme Court said that the police power is superior to your individual right to travel. The police power is paramount. It is the duty of the state. No? No? It is the duty of the state to protect you even against your own will. <clears throat> Limbawa, may mga OFW na tatawid sa Sandakan, sa Malaysia, dadaan sa Wittawi-Tawi, tapos uh, magtrabaho doon. Eh, hindi ka pwede magtrabaho kasi tourist lang ang, tourist lang ang visa mo. O wala nang visa, kailangan pagpunta sa mga ASEAN countries. But When you visit as a tourist, even if without visa, you are not supposed to work. So if you uh, if you uh, find engagement as a worker, you violate the law of the host country, no, the immigration law, and you can be arrested. There are many Filipinos who are languishing in jails in the Middle East and also in in Malaysia. So, the state can protect you even against yourself. The state does not need your consent to be protected. Hindi man kailangan na ma mananghid ang state ni mga pwede ba, Voltaire, I will protect you. No. Whether you like it or not, Voltaire, I will protect you. Parang, parang parents patre. Yung bang parents mo nangihingi ng pahintulot sa iyo? Pag sinasabing proteksyonan ka, parents, patri, ha? Protect always. Mo lagi proteksyon. Tinalad yun na, Bolter, you need protection. Kaya mag-ingat ka, no? If you cannot be good always, you need protection. And the state will give you the protection, no? Even if you do not like the protection, The protection to labor, as enshrined in the Constitution, that does not depend on the consent of the protected. That you take note of that. Kahit kahit ba yung mga workers pa magsasabi, hindi namin kailangan ng protection. Gusto namin magtrabaho it. Oh, eh, pag sinabi ng state, oh, hindi kayo pwedeng lumabas. Hindi kayo bibigyan ng kontrak. Pag pumunta kayo sa Middle East, wala kayong contract, uh, undocumented kayo. Undocumented, wala kayong protection ng Lex Contractus. Dahil doon ka paperman ng contract doon sa Dubai o sa Abu Dhabi, wala kang protection. Pero pag pinatay ka doon, tulungan ka pa rin ng gobyerno. Whether you are documented or not, it is the duty of the government to help you. No? Okay. Ito ha, the state's full protection. Uh, does not mean oppression of capital. Ito naman ang very delicate balance na kung ang protection mo naman nag, naghinobra ng protection mo, sobra-sobra na to the extent of killing the ghost that lays the golden egg. Limbawa, isang empleyado nagnakaw. He is caught in flagrante delicto. Pareho nung isang nurse na itago natin sa tunay niyang pangalan na si Maria Teresa Sanchez na nagnakaw ng nag-uwi ng mga supplies from St. Luke's Medical Center. Oh, 
Eh, sabi, 20 years na ako dito. Ngayon lang ako na nakasuhan. Tapos hindi naman na-consumate kasi nahuli ng gwardiya. So, masyado namang harsh yung penalty of dismissal. But, you know, this is a matter of this is a violation of trust. Ito yung LOTAC, L-O-T-A-C, Lost of Trust and Confidence. So, how can you continue employing a person that you do not trust? Kaya, Voltaire, kailangan talaga yung trust kasi pag walang trust, walang protection. Di ba? Yes, I think. Tandaan mo yan, ikaw lang ang nakikilala ko eh, kaya... Ikaw lagi kong tinatawag, ha? Yes, okay. Ah, oh, meron bang karyon dyan? Yung karyon, meron ako nakita karyon. Ang karyon, taga Barili yan. O, oh, meron ding, meron ding karyon sa Runday. No? Pero si, si Atorne Ernesto Karyon, nagiging labor arbiter yun, taga kuwan yun eh. Taga Barili. No? Ayan, nakita ko pa rin, Bilya Hermosa. Anong Bilya Hermosa? Dala, dalagit yan eh. Mga Bilya Hermosa, mayaman yan sa dalagit. No? No? Tahimik lang siya. So, in the case of Philippine Association of Service Exporters Incorporated versus Honorable Franklin Rilon in Bank, June 30, 1998, Justice Sarmiento, a ban of deployment of female OFWs to certain country was upheld by the Supreme Court as a valid exercise of police power. Uh, principle number three, the state's full protection means balancing. Balancing. Kailangan na uh, yung bang, uh, are you aware of the Latin maxim, sic oteri tuo ot alinum non laidas? Use your right in a manner that does not violate the right of others. So, if you are an employer and you have the right to terminate employment, you have the prerogative to fire, but you cannot use that right to violate the right of security of tenure. In other words, you, you, you always remember Article 19 of the Civil Code. Every person in the exercise of his right and in the performance of his duty must, ex uh, uh, must exercise justice, give everyone his due, and observe honesty and good faith. No? Must act with justice, give everyone his due, and observe honesty and good faith. So, when you exercise the right to terminate, you have to do it in a manner that you uh, do it with justice and you give the, what is due, which is due process and observe honesty and good faith. Huh? Uh, alam nyo, merong isang batas na magamit nyo sa lahat ng subject at yung Article 19 of the Civil Code, pag nahutda na mo katawiran, pag naubusan na talaga kayo wala na kayong masabi, gamitin nyo yung Article 19 kasi pwedeng magamit yan sa lahat ng sitwasyon. Diba? Reserve ninyo yan. No? So, labor laws are means of balancing. Labor laws range from hiring to retiring. And it includes the labor code and other civil special laws. And it is seven books. Itong uh, pinapakita ko sa inyo. Can you see this, ladies and gentlemen? Pakita ninyo yan. Okay? Yes, Paul. Number one. Yes, sir, attorney. Pag sinabing the state afford full protection to labor, kung binisayo na, imo na nga panalipdan ang mga mamumuo against home. That begs the question, against home. Your answer against unscrupulous employers, against dishonest recruiters, against traffickers, yung trafficking in person, against labor-only contractors. These are the predators. Kasi ang mundo, sabi nga ni Carmi Martin, 
Ang mundo ay isang malaking kiyapo. Ang daming manduroko, ang daming mangingilad. Para ba ni karbon o tabuan ba? Daghang kay mangingilad, na daghang manguot, daghang daghang daghan ba nga nagkukunwari nga mutabang nimo. So, we have to protect this employees who are the probable victims of the predators at ang mga predators niya nakalinya na yan yung mga employer na nandadaya ng minimum wage yung mga employer na nandadaya ng overtime pay yung hindi nagbabayad ng 13 month pay yung uh, hindi nagre-remit sa SSS sa PhilHealth pag-ibig at saka yung ginagamit yung kapangyarihan to dismiss recklessly without due regard to the security of tenure which is a constitutional right. Can you imagine constitutional right ng workers yan versus a management prerogative? The management prerogative arises from Book 2 of the Labor Code. Ano yun? The, bo the law on property and its modification. If you own the business, you have the right to hire the people to run the business. You can transfer them, you can promote them, you can lay off in case of financial difficulties, and you can also discipline and dismiss them when there is a just cause. But you have to give your process. So, therefore, uh, the first protection of labor is really against this kind of people. The second one is, can you protect, uh, do we have to protect labor from the union when the union is supposed to be the protector? Bakit ka nagtayo ng union? Because you want to be strong. Parang fraternity yan eh. Parang asosasyon yan. Pero kung ang sarili mong union ang umaapi sa'yo, when, when the protector becomes the victimizer, para itong mga polis eh, kung ang mga polis uh, is supposed to be protecting citizen, nangyari sa Amerika, pinatay si Floyd, oh, itim, racism, uh, police brutality, Nangyari sa UP Lahog. Oh. Yan ang mga example na the per, yung tao na pinagtiwalaan mo, ang union is a juridical personality. Pinagtiwalaan mo mag-protect sa'yo. Kung siya naman ang mangubra ng union dues na sobrang laki. Walang, walang written authorization ang members. Oh. Walang walang resolusyon na pinas in a general assembly called for the purpose. So, the union becomes the oppressor. Makipagsabuatan pa yung union with management to use the closure provision. Pag ang isang empleyado hindi bumoto doon sa officer na nanalo, ang majority ngayon, pag initan yung uh, minority employee na yan, Ga, uh, makipagsabuatan sa management yung uh, use of the union security clause as an instrument to deprive the employee of his security of tenure. So the state will afford protection to labor. <coughs> so the union becomes the victimizer and the state becomes the protector. Now, in the case of the government, why is the state protecting the worker against the government? Diba government is an element of the state? E kung halimbawa ang labor arbiter, meron siyang deadline to decide a case. Pag appeal from the regional director, money claims less than 5,000 pesos under Article 129 
meron lang siyang may 5 days 5 days to appeal and then 10 days the labor arbiter has to this the, the NLRC has to decide that within 10 days Mr. Uh, si Attorney Carion magiging labor arbiter tapos mag-appear doon si Attorney Bolter sabihin na classmate naman tayo pagbigyan mo ako dito ganyan meron tayong 1 million dito hati tayo kita mo yan e kung napatunayan ng empleyado yan isang apidabit lang sa ombudsman yan o pag after hearing found guilty wala the state will protect labor from government officials who are not who are not only lazy corrupt negligent and uh, betraying the trust of the people are you following me so far yes attorney uh, meron na meron ba kayong natutunan sa akin na Hindi pa masyadong malinaw sa isip niyo o alam na niyo lahat ito? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Ako lang talaga naghanay dito. Gihanay ko ni Tanan. Ako rin gihanay. Ano, number four, unethical lawyers. There was, you have taken legal ethics. At under Article 110, Book 3 of the Labor Code, pag money claims, only 10%. Kung ikaw maging abogado ka, Tapos manghingi ka ng attorney's fees na hati-hati, ha? kalahati ang mapunta sa iyo, kalahati mapunta sa manggagawa. That is unethical. That is a ground to discipline you by the bar. And you can even be disbarred. Oh. So, uh, the state will protect the workers against unethical lawyers. There are so many instances. Uh, there is a case of Wilfredo Taganas. If you will Google that, Wilfredo Taganas, an ethical lawyer, the disciplina ng Supreme Court, dahil sobra-sobra yung hinihingi sa mga manggagawa. Oh. Meron nga isang manggagawa doon sa Negros Oriental na sagasaan sa truck ng tubo. Tapos luma, lumapit sa abogado dito sa Cebu. Sir, uh, sir tabangi ko sir, kaya naputol akong, akong paa. Iputol na lang yun, kaya nasagasaan sa ako ang truck. Kaya mag, manghingi tayo ng workmen's compensation sa Book 4, Employees' Compensation, Partial Disability. Kaya naingo ang abogado. Kaya, pila may bayad mo na ko. And sir, ayaw lang sa akong panil nga karon kaya wala man ko ikabayad ni mo. Ilista lang tanang gasto ni mo. O niya, kung onsay mabilin, tungaon lang na to. Niya, ipapirma ginya itong komplinan. Ipapirma niya. Ipapirma sa komplinan kaya kanigong watay nahot nga ikahatag sa abogado. Niya karon pag abot na sa award, ni award lang po ang labor arbiter o 70,000 pesos sa putol nga paa. Niya karon gipatawag na niya ang komplainad. Ari dere dong kay nadawat ng kwarta ato na ning kwintahon. Gilista niya tanang gasto niya. Gibutang dito sa kalendaryo, sa records kalendaryo, gibutang dito dunay Colgate, dunay bayad sa pagplansa sa barong. Ningon ang komplainad nga nung gi-appeal man ni Sir Colgate. Yung, uh, oh, mag-hearing di ita, dili ko manot brush. Niya ka ng barong, sir. Uh, ang mo, at mo appear ko dito, uh, dili ko magsud o barong. Niya ka ng pagplan sa e-child yun na dito. Kaya mo mo na isabot na to. Niya, pag abot, ni abot man ang gasto o 30 mil, di 40 mil na lang ang nabili. At ang 40 mil, mo ito yung ito nga lang, itagaan lang ito sa abogado o 20,000. Sa 70,000 nga award na 20,000 na lang dawat. Makahilap ko din ang komplainan. Yung komplainan, Sir, sa 70,000 nga award, ang imuha, 50 man, ako 20 lang. Kinsa mang duha na ito, naputlan o paa, Sir? Mura mag-ikaw mo yung naputlan. 
mo na mo example the state shall afford protection kung gikiha ka tong abogadoha dili man to tagayobe kay ang tagayobe manggiluyon mga abogado may mo mga dili bayran ako kapila na ko katabang wa jud ko bayri nagadawat nag dako naluoy nang ang Ginoo ra may hibaw ana no pag ikaw na isahan ka na isang tao ang ibang tao ang magbayad sa iyo kasi ang Panginoon hindi natutulong so the state afford protection to labor against an ethical lawyers itong number 5 ang pinakamatindi ito ang masabi ko sa inyo kung ang isang manggagawa pumirma ng quit claim waiver resignation out of fear out of lack of lack of knowledge yung bang merong gross misrepresentation may threat merong intimidation may coercion merong deceit ngayon meron na the best evidence is the quit claim kung sa civil law yan kung magkaso sabihin lang ng abogado your honor I move to dismiss the case because the best evidence is the document the document said that he waives his right because he has already received the consideration so on this ground the claim has already been satisfied and this case is without merit it should be dismissed but in a labor court that will not be given due course because the testimony of a worker can even override uh, at this point uh, we recognize the presence of our beloved dean uh, dean joseph uh, Si Tur Joseph Turigusa Alam mo ang ah, mga Joseph Mga buutan ka na oh. Thank you Joseph oh, Mayang gabi eh kay Hap Hello. Mayang gabi eh I'm happy that you are taking up Masters Soon, soon you will be a doctorate In Saan university ka nag, uh, nag Take up uh, din San Beda sir Ah bahay ko ang webinar Nevermind. Kasi yung subject mo, National Security, napakaganda yan because of the anti-terror uh, bill. Anti you know? oh, napakagandang pag-usapan yan. It is the conflict between the power of the state and the right of an individual. Bill of rights. Uh, maybe what, one time, uh, if you can hold a sort of a, a special lecture or you know, a, a seminar on anti-terrorism bill for us. Uh, okay, basta hiningin natin o hiningin mo I, I, I do not claim to, uh, I, educate us on national security yeah I do not claim uh, expertise on political law but I can handle that because I'm also a reserve colonel in the armed forces because as I I was commissioned uh, by the Jago uh, mas, I have a master's degree in National Security Administration. Okay, so, very good. After your demo, review class, maybe we... Yeah. Schedule another time for this special topic. Yes. I told, I told them, Dean, that uh, on sometime in October, I will be lecturing in San Carlos because I was asked by Villasis Law Center in coordination with uh, G Dean Joan Largo. Uh, I have a schedule Saturday whole day and Sunday whole day. So I plan that the Monday following, I will pass by the College of Law of my alma mater and I want to meet the members of this class, no, of this class in person so that I can give a special lecture also in person by way of a symposium, no? 
if, if, if face to face will be allowed by then, then Attorney Darche, uh, let's let's uh, calendar it. Ah. And, and make and make the necessary arrangement. By October, wala nang COVID. Wala so, ko. <laughs> Hopefully, sir. Let us claim that with the Holy Spirit, when we pray, we believe because you ask and it shall be given to you. You you just ask and it shall be given to you. No? So, if I may continue, Dave, can I continue? Okay. So, I... Huh? Sorry, Kayo, I cannot, I cannot stay up to the end. Ah, di bali. To my own class. Kahit kunting pagtingin. No? <laughs> Kung... Uh, kahit kunting... Uh, basta ikaw... Uh, uh, for the sake of the students and the graduates. No? Mahalad ta sa... Mga... Okay, di man ta kahatag kwarta o amtay kwarta, kani servisyo lang. No? Okay? Okay, sir. Salamat kayo. Mm, eh, uh, as I was saying, the most important protection by the state in favor of the worker is against the workers on ignorance. Ignorance, naive, yung tinatawag na lack of foresight, lack of skill. Now, in the bar examination, you will be asked to make a ruling. Is the waiver, uh, is the waiver uh, reasonable and just? Or should you annul the waiver? That is a very difficult question. Do not rush. Because the principle is not all waivers are invalid. When a waiver is validly entered into, you have two conditions. Dalawang kondisyon hanapin mo. You're, you should remember the elements of a contract. You remember Book 4 of the Civil Code? What are the elements of contract? Consent, object, and consideration. Correct? Uh -huh. So, so sa, sa, sa waiver, ang una mong tanungin dyan is, first, yung, yung, yung extrinsic validity is the consent. Was the consent freely given? Was there a meeting of the minds? Was there no vitiated consent? Was there undue misrepresentation, undue influence? Yung mga coercion, force, intimidation, deceit. Because if there is, the facts of the case stated that there is this factor, even one of these factors. You can say that the consent was not freely given. This this so-called contract by adhesion, you remember that, uh, Dean Wagas? Contract by adhesion? When the, when the only participation of the worker was to affect his signature? Ano mga trabahante in town sa construction na halos dili na makamao mo perma? Unya, unya, Tagaan ni mo quit claim nga parting nindutang mo in English. Parting nindutang in English. Bisag ipanotaryo pa na ni mo. Unya, mapuribahan nga katong tao nga ni Perma Moralatog Buta. Ngaywa makasabot sa iyang gipermahan. Tungod kay sa iyang panginahanglan. Yung uh, dire necessity. Ma your, your child is in the hospital. You need blood. No? And you have to buy the blood. So you need the money. Perma ka, bisa konsep, perma on basta na ay po. That, that consent was not freely given. It was taking advantage of the, of the situation. Kaya kayo, lalo na kayo mga lalaki, huwag kayo mag-take advantage sa mga babae. Ha? Tandaan mo yan, Multer at saka Atty. Karyun. No? Yung mga babae na nangangailangan, Uh, lubhang pangangailangan ng babae pagkatapos mag-take advantage kayo kasi vulnerable siya. O, oh, bagong namatayan ng husband, byuda, batang-bata, tapos take advantage nyo. Mananagot kayo sa Panginoon yan. Because, vitiated ang consent niyan. 
Hindi talaga kayo mahal niyan. Parang ginagamit na rin kayo diyan para panakip sa kanyang pangangailangan. So wag wag niyo gamitin yan. Sa labor law, never use your knowledge. When you become a lawyer, do not allow your client who is a powerful businessman to use you as a lawyer to coerce, to deceive, to exercise uh, certain force or coercion over a worker because napakalaki ang gaba ana no Ga gawa sa gaba pag yan ay makarating sa supreme court that document will be set aside because of lack of consent yung pangalawa yung intrinsic validity yung yung consideration if the consideration is grossly disproportionate For instance, 500,000 yung dapat niya matanggap, pinap, pinap, pinatanggap mo lang siya ng wala pang 100,000. Meron, merong decided case ha. I don't know, Attorney Wagas, if you are aware of this. There was a faculty member of the University of Cebu, a lady, empl lady employee. And in fact, Later on, she became a lawyer. And uh, she was asked to sign a quit claim, whereby she was made to receive an amount which is grossly disproportionate to what she was legally entitled. Now, I do not know she was a knowledgeable person why she signed that document. She signed the quit claim. And then later on, uh, filed a case, and she was she was victorious. She prevailed in her case, and uh, the case was decided in her, in her favor. So, hindi lang ang mga ignoranting tao niyan, kahit ba ikaw college graduate ka pero you are subjected to intimidation or dire necessity ka, nangangailangan ka talaga. So, nag-take advantage ang other party. Well, uh, that case, the state, in that case, the state shall afford protection to you. you know? So, is there any question so far? If there is none, I will continue. Uh, we are now beyond halfway. Yung the law on discrimination. Alam nyo, discrimination is not illegal per se. Huwag ninyong isipin na lahat ng discrimination ay bawal. Meron talaga ang discrimination. Halimbawa, pag mag-conduct ka ng pre-employment examination, tapos uh, sampo ang kumuha, disqualified yung anim, apat lang ang qualified. You are dis discriminating against the others, but that discrimination is allowed by law. Kasi mamimili ka, may the best man win. So, kung halimbawa, sabihin mo, Attorney Wagas, we, we are uh, recruiting a new librarian for the UB Law Library. But one of the qualification, you must be a law graduate of UV. So that is also discrimination, but is that illegal? No, that is not illegal. Merong ang sinasabi sa mga newspaper nung araw, wala pang COVID, only graduates of UP, Ateneo, Lasal, all others need not apply. That is discrimination, but is that illegal? No, that is not illegal. Not all discriminations are illegal. Not all are disallowed. Only when it is based, uh, based on gender. Kung sasabihin, bawal tayo mag-hire ng LGBT. Hindi pwede yan. Doon, nung araw ng bata pa ako, Atty. Wagas, doon sa aming bayan, merong pare eh, nagsabi, oh, makinig ka nito, Voltaire, ha? Ang sabi ng pare, 
Kamu mga bayot dili gyud mo makasaka sa langit. Niyon pare, kamu dang mga bayot dili mo makasaka sa langit. Nasuko ang mga bayot oi. Na, nasuko ang mga bayot ning sa pader, mali bay kasi imong gisulti. Kami mga bayot ma, kami noy mauna maadto sa langit, baka mauna pa kami sa imo. Magdekorate na. Oh, mao lagi. Kay ang ano mauna mo? mo? Kinsa may mo decorate? Oh, di ba? Mao na nga dili ka maka discriminate based on gender. You cannot discriminate. Sabi na itong posisyon para lang sa mga lalaki to kasi kailangan dito kailangan umakyat ito. Meron nga pilot mga babae, may mga general babae, walang magagawa ang lalaki na hindi kaya ng babae. Correct? Karamihan, alam nyo, uh, Atty. Wagas, noong panahon namin, isa lang talaga ang babae sa seksyon namin. Kaya siya lang ang muse. Pero ngayon, almost one half, more than pa, ang karamihan mga babae ngayon, mga bar top notcher, tinan mo, mga bar top notcher, last bar, number one, babae, number two, babae. Nako, kasi sobrang focus sila eh. So, we cannot discriminate based on gender, race. You cannot say that this position is only good for expats or good only for Filipinos. Except kung ariyo sa hearing kanina tungkol sa Filipino citizen ni Gabby Lopez, no? But that is not employment. That is ownership of a mass media company. No? Itong religion, religion ha uh, yang mga ibang company gusto mag-hire na mga iglesia kay dili kuno mo join ug union but you cannot declare this as a policy hindi pwede yung sabi na katoliko lang sa San Beda nga dagama muslim nga estudyante isipin niyo ha I think we have a muslim also participant of this uh, webinar uh, attorney Meron ba? Yes. So, kung sino man yung Muslim na yan, Assalamualaikum na lang. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Yan. Anong ibig sabihin yan? Ang, pag, ang mga Muslim, pag Assalamualaikum, sagutin mo yan ng Alaikum Assalam. Peace be with you. ba? Diba? Hindi mo sagutin ng ang malay ko sa iyo. No? Assalamualaikum Alaikum Assalam Yon. Peace be with you So, walang pinipili Tungkol sa relihiyon, Tungkol sa Sa sekta Meron pang dagdag ngayon na Age Bawal na ngayon attorney na Mag-advertise ka na Wanted secretary Not more than 35 years old Kasi Before you can see that kind of advertisement, magbasa ka sa Sunstar, sa Freeman, di ba? Not more than 35 years old. Bawal na ngayon yan. Pag ikaw ang HR manager, kahit 85 years old, mag-apply sa'yo, huwag mo sabihin, ayaw ka namin tanggapin, 85 ka na, hindi ka na makaakyat dito sa Rivera Building. Hindi ganon. Lahat ng applicant, kahit 85 years old, Bigyan mo na application form. Tapos bigla, bigyan mo na exam. Sabi mo, gumawa ka ng PowerPoint. Siyempre, hindi siya marunong. Eh, baksak siya, hindi dahil sa edad niya. Pero dahil sa kanyang uh, skills, kulang sa skills. Oh, who knows kung marunong yan. You cannot disqualify a person based, based on age. Ang panglima is based on unionism. Because... Uh, unfair labor practice when you discriminate on the basis of union affiliation. Kaya it is illegal to state in the application form, have you been a union member? Are you a member of the union? And then use that, use the answer as a basis for determining fitness that is not allowed. No? So lima na yan. Gender, race, creed, age, and union affiliation. No? So, 
if there are no questions, we will proceed to the basic term. No? Uh, when you are born into this world, ladies and gentlemen, you are a person. But when you, a when you reach the age of 15, the, the age of 15, you are a member of the labor force. If you are not in school, you are considered as unemployed. So, worker, even if you are not working, you are considered a part of the labor force. The moment you enter into employer-employee relationship using the four-week test of hiring, paying of compensation, control, and dismissal, you become an employee. And as an employee, you may be casual, you may be provisionary or regular. So, casual or seasonal, uh, this is defined in Book 6 of the Labor Code, except fixed term employment, which is by jurisprudence. In the case of PNOC Energy Development Corporation in Tungunan Leyte uh, versus the NLRC, Justice Eduardo Natsura, as ponente, gave a lecture on that the different kinds of employment and uh, definition of regular employment and also casual and project employment no? which was reiterated by Justice Arturo Brion in the case of Universal, Universal Robina Sugar Corporation versus NLRC where uh, Justice Brion uh, created a new kind of employee which is called regular seasonal. Yung bang magtrabaho lang during milling season, magtrabaho during planting season, then pag natapos na yung season, wala na silang trabaho. But in the next planting season, they have the right of first refusal. They have already attained a limited security of tenure. So management cannot hire any others because these people who have been repeatedly hired became what is called regular seasonal in the case of Universal Robina Sugar Corporation versus NLRC written by Arturo Brion Justice then uh, at this point in time uh, you know who are rank and file, who are supervisory. Supervisory is defined in Book 5, in Article 2, 219, Paragraph M, Confidential. Uh, confidential employee is defined in uh, Article 82, as well as Managers, Book 3. Executives are... Uh, the top managers, the board of directors are not employees. So they do not enjoy the rights of employees, the board of directors, because they are the representative of the owners. So uh, in a way, they are also part of the employer. Now, in the case of union, when you organize a union, you have articles of incorporation, you elect the officers, you are a union. But you are not yet an LLO. You are not an LLO unless you are registered. So it is the registration that uh, elevate your status from a mere union up uh, 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 to an LLO. And then when you win in the certification election or you are uh, voluntarily recognized by management, you become a SEBA. SEBA is sole and exclusive bargaining agent. And when you sign a collective bargaining agreement with management, you become a party to a CBA. So, you see, this is a metamorphosis. Uh, like larva, pupa, chrysalis, butterfly, diba? Dadaang ka ng proseso. So, Sa, tana, sa tanang law professor sa Tibuo Kaliputan, ako ra nagbuhat ingon ani ba? Can you see this? This is not the solar system. Nagumpisa, person, 
worker, employee, union, legitimate labor organization, SEBA, pumirma ng CBA, tapos ang unfair labor practice, naging complainant sa kaso. Kung mag-file ng notice of strike, nagiging striker, eh, binalikan sila ng management, eh, di, dinismiss sila. Or kung hindi dinismiss, siniparate. By the way, ha, yung term ninyo, gamitin nyo yung word na dismissal kung ang ground ay just cause. Meaning serious misconduct, insubordination, fraud, gross negligence, crimes, ang gamitin nyo, dismiss. Pero kung ang mood ninyo ay authorized cause like retrenchment, uh, redundancy, labor saving device, ang term na proper is separate. That's why there is separation pay. Are you following me? Do you hear me? Wala na yata ang tao. Ah? Ah? 44 kung makabuok. Oh, ang na nakita ko kanina, for ang kanina, 45. Ngayon, 44 na lang. Yan na may balaod si Kim Cho. Bawal lumabas sa classroom. O. Oh. Ah, ini Lumabas sa classroom. O, oh, karun, 42 na lang. No? Siguro, doon na ito'y lakaw. So, again, I created this model, no? this, uh, this one-page presentation of all the jurisdiction of the different offices in the Department of Labor. And when we come to the proper uh, session later on, when we come to procedures, we will take this up one by one based on the, the nature of the case, where to file, where to appeal, Rule 65, Rule 45. Nandiyan lahat yan. So, is there any question? Ah, ito yung sinabi ko kanina. The Department of Labor's ban on deployment of female OFWs to certain countries was upheld by the Supreme Court as a valid exercise of police power. These are not new cases, but it is landmark. Landmark and in-bank cases will never expire. Remember that the chairman this year is an expert in constitutional law. Therefore, you have to expect questions about police power, about validity of uh, issuance by the executive. No? Kailangan matalino kayo. Tingnan ninyo. Kung si Justice Bernabe yan, nakaraan, Regional Trial Court yun, mahilig yun sa mga procedures. Pero ngayon, ito si Justice Leonin, hindi ito dumaan naging judge, professor ito eh. From, from the classroom direct to the Supreme Court, hindi dumaan ng Court of Appeals or RTC. Hindi pareho kay Peralta na RTC, nagiging Sandigang Bayan, nagiging... Court of Appeal, Supreme Court. Ito si Bersamen din, galing sa RTC. Hanggang Court of Appeal, na punta din sa Sinigang Bayan. Pero ito si Marbeck Leonin, professor talaga ito, at saka itong pinakabata, mag-retire na lang lahat ng justices, siya na maiwan dyan. No? Those who seek to sacrifice the rights of the workers in pursuit of profits, cannot use the Bill of Rights as a weapon to defeat the overriding police power of the state. Kaya yung anti-terror bill can be justified as police power eh. Uh, pat, pati yung uh, human rights minsan nasa sacrifice because of police power. No? Police power is inherent and need not be explicitly provided. Inherent yan eh. The ban is deemed not violative of equal protection clause. The ban is deemed not to impair the right to travel and it does not violate the non-impairment clause. Tama? The police power of the state cannot be subordinated 
to the businessmen's freedom to contract and to the non-impairment clause. These are very big pronouncements by the Supreme Court, which you have to highlight. You have to highlight and you have to remember because these are very important principles. In the name of police power, the state can regulate the business of medical clinics. Ito, another case ito ha. Uh, this is labanan ito ng dalawang klaseng medical clinic eh. Kasi ang negosyo ng mga medical clinic, lahat ng mga RT, mga OFW dadaan sa clinic, ay uh, sinabject ni uh, ng Secretary of Labor to regulation. Kasi sobra-sobra na yung pinapaningil nila. And ang uh, sabi ng Supreme Court, yung right ninyo to earn profit is subordinate to the police power of the state in pursuit of social justice. Kaya ito mahimik kayo. Ito si Art Brion, ang pinente, in bank din ito ha. Wala itong dissenting opinion. Mabigat itong kaso na ito. The regulation by the state of the operation of medical clinics is held by the Supreme Court as a reasonable exercise of police power because there is a standard that is reasonable and it is applied uniformly to all similarly situated establishments. So, is there any question? Oh, yeah, mga hot topic ha. Ito, bibigyan mo na kayo ng mga hot topic Uh, pas pasimula ito sa next 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 uh, uh, next Monday natin ko. Ito yung mga provision na napakahalaga. Halimbawa ito, tanungin ko kayo. Assignment ninyo ha. Uh, kayo, what are the three kinds of managers under the labor code? Yung manager under book 3 excluded from overtime pay. Yung manager under book 5, not allowed to join unions. At manager in book 6, yung loss of trust and confidence. You distinguish the three kinds of managers because they are not the same. You can be a manager under book 3, and yet you are not a manager in book 5. Do you realize that, ladies and gentlemen, when you studied labor law, that there are three kinds of manager? Did Anybody, any professor tell you that you have to remember the three kinds of managers. Huwag na niyong sagutin yan, makasama pa tayo ng loob. No? You have the right to remain silent. Ang pinaka-importanting book sa Libor Code ay Book 6. Because there has never been a bar since the time of Manuel Quezon where there is no question about illegal dismissal. So yung book 6 is only composed of 10 articles. If you have only 10 minutes before entering the room in the bar examination, you read book 6. For sure, there will be two or three questions about illegal dismissal. So you have to master serious misconduct, insubordination, fraud, gross negligence, and crime against the person of the employer, immediate member of his family, or duly authorized representative. Then, the next most important is Book 5, and also Book 3, and Book 1. Ang pinakawalang kwentang libro sa book, sa Libor Code ay ang Book 2, at ang Book 4, ang Book 7. Walang masyadong tanong dyan. Ang tanong talaga, 80% of the questions are here in the four books. So since you do not have enough time, you focus on the most important ones. Okay? Do you think that this is useful if I tell you what are the most important articles of the labor code? Wala. Very useful. Very useful. Oh. So, sa next meeting ko na sasabihin yan kasi parang kumukunti yata yung umaaten at Torniwagas. Ano bang problema? 
Hindi ba din na nagustuhan yung unang one? Ang uban na ito yung message na ako na nahinay lang ang internet connection mo, na disconnect. Nagae o libre yung internet. Nagae o laptop. Okay, so it's 8 o'clock already or about 4 minutes away. I want you to remember what I requested na tonight bago kayo matulog. 44 kayo ha. Or 42 na lang, ilagay nating 40. Pumunta naman kayo sa YouTube at saka mag-type kayo ng Yusik JBJ. And then mag-like-like ba kayo doon, mag-comment kayo. Kasi nandoon yung mga video ko, yung mga lecture ko. At nandoon na rin yung buhay ko kasi may mga tribute doon sa mga OF, OFWs. Nagbigay ng tribute sa akin. Saka yung, yung trip to Europe. My family and I went to Europe last year. Last year, nagpunta kami sa Europe, sa Fatima, sa Lourdes, sa Rome. That was the third time we went to Rome. Nagpunta kami sa Spain, nagpunta kami sa Portugal, sa France, sa Germany, sa Switzerland. Marami kami yung pinupuntahan. So, nandoon. Kung gusto na niya magnanyaw-lingaw, pero kung gusto niyo matuto, nandoon talaga ang video sa mga lecture. At every uh, Monday naman, on Thursday, may libre akong webinar, which is about labor law. Ang topic namin this coming Thursday is napaka-exciting. You know what? It's about sexual harassment. And next Monday, love, sex, and romance in the workplace. LSR. Love, sex, and romance. Ang employer ba may pakialam kung ma-inlove ang isang estudyante, uh, ang isang professor na inlove sa kanyang estudyante? Yan ba ay illegal, immoral ba yan? Meron na mga desisyon ang Supreme Court sa mga masilang usapin na yan. At kayo ay makikinig sa aking webinar na libre, wala namang bayad dyan. Kung kailangan nyo, mag-text kayo sa akin. Ang number ko ay 0917 oh, I will repeat 0917 8606 Tapos ang email ko ay josephusbjimenez at gmail.com at attorney josephusbjimenez at yahoo.com So kung gusto talaga niyong matuto kayo ng malaliman, mabuti na yan ninyong mag-attend kayo. Kung may, kung may panahon naman kayo, wala kayong uh, ginagawa, wala, hindi kayo nag-TikTok, hindi kayo nag-Facebook, is mag-focus na kayo sa inyong pag-aaral kasi malapit na ang araw ng paghukom. Mabuti nga kayo na pospon yung bari. Kung hindi na pospon ang bari, so that means you have more time to prepare. At ngayon lang nangyayari na may mag-volunteer sa inyo na libre, na wala kayong bayaran, na mag-lecture sa inyo, na kinasingkasing ang lecture, na for 36 Mondays. Attorney Wagas, this has never been done in the 100 years history of UV. It's only now. Yes, Attorney. Yes, Attorney. And we're very thankful to you, Attorney. Attorney Antas Ginoo, magpasalamat. O kamo nga naminaw karon kanako unsa may inyong ikasulti sulti mo ay bisag gamay na lang pulong no pakonsuelo ba no ikaw bolter unsa man ka diha kan ang asa ko attorney ba regarding sa quit claim if ever ang employee kay dili mo sign sa quit claim maka receive ra gyapon sa sa last pay well well There, the, the signing of a quit claim is just an assurance of acknowledgement. Kung halimbawa, ang wording ng, ng quit claim is very unfair to the employee, pwede naman niyang permahan with a statement that this signature is only to acknowledge receipt of the amount. It does not mean that he is waiving all his rights. Kasi, minsan kasi, uh, Voltaire, yung the way the waiver is written is really uh, unfair to the other side. Hindi ba fair? Kasi contract of adhesion yan eh. Uh, pwede rin niyang sabihin, 
receive under protest. No. <laughs> receive under protest, or receive last pay lang. Hmm. Uh, Para bang may reservation siya sa kanyang uh, uh, he, may, he may raise issue about it. Ah, uh, uh, yes, okay. Oh, any other, uh, why are you working, Bulter? Are you working? Uh, oh, oh, attorney, uh, wala naman, tinanamgo yung mga na quit claim by pepper na yung mga quit claim na uh, resignation. Di bali, basta ayuhan lang po nga, fair po ang quit claim ba, dili ba masyado kayong iniipit natin yung mga manggagawa ba, no? Parang pati ang kaluluwa nila sinurinder na sila sa iyo, no? Uh, thank you, attorney. Okay, so Yes, attorney. Salamat. Oh, good night and uh, see you again next Monday. See you next Monday, everyone. See you again. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, basta mag-like gid mo, mag-subscribe mo. Thank you. Ay, kalimot, subscribe You said GBJ. Okay. Okay.